This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and I am solo this week for the onside kick. Sean, giving him the uh, the week off after helping me out last week, finishing our NFL season previews for you guys. He'll be back next week to help me with our NFL hold us to them predictions. I also have a little bit of a bittersweet announcement after next week, we are discontinued. We're kind of taking a little bit of a sidestep here at Most Valuable Podcast. We've had the Onside Kick has been one of our flagship shows for about what now? It, it was the first one we started in 2012. So that'd be about seven years that we've been doing the Onside Kick in some form. It hasn't been this exact form. Um, this exact form is maybe about four years old. Um, here at MVP, but it's what started our kind of, what should I say, love for wanting to do this full-time and wanting to actually try to make this full-time. I should say that since we're not full-time, but actually wanting to make this full-time. After next week, we're taking a sidestep where we're discontinuing the onside kick. Still going to have some football videos. I'll bring you those as big stories come up that we have to talk about and doing predictions and stuff. But we're going to come out with another podcast after next week, which from this point is two weeks away. So we're going to, I talked to Sean and Dave, we're going to have that be a surprise in two weeks. Come back to the channel. We are going to have a brand new podcast debuting that is going to take the spot of the onside kick. Wanted to start off with that bittersweet news to let everyone know um, a little bit in advance. But I got a jam-packed show for you guys. Going to have two patrons on the show today, Matt and Pat, both calling in, both talking about quarterbacks. Pat's going to be talking about NFC quarterbacks. Matt is going to be talking about Hall of Fame quarterbacks with me. But we're going to start off the show with a little Ezekiel Elliott. And before I get into everything, make sure to support us at patreon.com backslash most of podcast. That's how we get out of this studio that we're currently in and get a studio of our own. This is not our studio. It's one that we are blessed to be able to use. We get a studio of our own through our supporters at patreon.com backslash most of all podcast. That link is down below, but let's start with this Ezekiel Elliott kind of kind of news because it's not I say news but it's not news that we get a running back each and every year that's not happy with his contract that wants a new contract from their existing team and Ezekiel Elliott is not the first ever he's not even the first this year as Melvin Gordon has also said hey I'm gonna hold out I ain't coming in I'm gonna be fine holding out until I get a new contract or you can trade me. Zeke hasn't gone that far. He hasn't gone the trade me route. But Zeke has made it clear he wants a brand new contract. And first off, I just want to set everything straight of what Zeke's contract is. So I'm looking at spot, spot rack here. He's in the fourth of his five-year deal. So he's got this year, next year, Then he becomes an unrestricted free agent. So the Cowboys have to lock him down sooner. Or do they have to lock him down sooner rather than later? We're going to get into that. But basically his contract's coming up to an end. So he's looking for money. And my mind kind of goes a million different ways with this. But let's start with asking the question, has Ezekiel Elliott played his last game In a cowboy uniform. Part of me wants to say no. That's my first gut reaction is no. Because how I think this is going to play out is. I think right now we're in a little chess match. Between Jerry Jones and the front office. Ezekiel Elliott and his camp. And right now they're just waiting for. Who is going to be the one to blink first. Is it going to be Zeke? Is it going to be Jerry Jones? Who's going to do it? And if I'm Ezekiel Elliott, 
I know my worth. I know that two years ago, I was suspended. And up before that suspension, we were five and three. When I was gone, we were three and three. And then I came back and we ended up, I think they ended up being nine and seven that year. So if we do the math, five and three, and then when they, go, they would go to eight and six, and then they're one and one when he came back, if that math is correct. But they were chugging when he was starting that year off. And there's a part of me that's like, okay, Zeke knows his worth. He also plays the running back position, which is one of the most demanding positions in football because once you get to that age of 30, if you hadn't got your money before then, odds are you're not going to be able to get your money when it comes to just age because of the wear and tear on a body that we expect from our running backs. And Zeke is a guy that this Cowboy team needs to rely on week in and week out. I'm just going to pull up his stats really quick just to see his carries per year since he's been in the league. And it has been so rookie year. He had 322 touches um, in 15 games. Then in 10 games in 2017, that was the suspension year, um, he had 242. Um, let me pull out. I'm going to pull out a calculator really quick just to see what he would have been on pace for. So let's see. 242 divided by 10. And then that's, what, 24 if I times that by a full 16-game season. He was on pace, on pace, for 387 carries that year. Um, and then last year, through 15 games, he had 304. So we can say comfortably that Zeke is a 300, I'd say a 300-touch guy, where he's going to get 300 touches per season each and every year. So that means as a team, you're relying on him a lot. And some may say, hey, if you rely on him a lot, go ahead and pay him because you still need him. You don't want him to walk. But the Cowboys are kind of in a tricky situation because not only do they have to give Zeke his money after next year, next year being his contract year, they currently have three players this year that they have to pay. Dak Prescott being one of them. Braylon Jones being one of them. Jalen Smith being the third. And for me, I just, I think this is a very tricky situation that the Cowboys are kind of finding themselves in with Zeke because, yes, you rely on Zeke a lot. Yes, your run game is decimated. Yeah, I'm going to use the word decimated without Ezekiel Elliott out there. But at the same time, what's your team going to be better at? If you re-sign, let's say you re-sign just two of the three guys. Let's say you get Dak and Jalen Smith and you lock those guys up. Jalen Smith is the only one that's unique. I believe he's the one that's the RFA. Um, Jones and Prescott, Unrestricted, Jalen Smith, I believe, is a restricted free agent, so Cowboys have a little bit of wiggle room with that. But let's say they just get Smith and Prescott. Do you think the Cowboys would win more games? And I'm asking you now. I'm not answering this question because I really don't know. Like, I have a thought, but I don't really know the true answer. That's why I'm asking you. So do you think the Cowboys would win more games if they re-signed Dak and Jalen Smith or if they lost out on all three of those guys or only got one of those, probably Dak, but loses Jalen Smith, loses Braylon Jones to make sure that Zeke got his money. The answer for me is you got to get these three guys their money now so that they don't hit free agency and then worry about Zeke next year when it's his contract year. And that kind of fits the line of the Cowboy front office. As I'm looking here on CBSSports.com. Um, they have 
an article with a quote from Cowboys COO Stephen Jones. And he said, and I quote, well, I mean, we've got it budgeted that we're going to pay Zeke a significant contract at some point. He's right there at the top with the best in the business, if not the best. We saw what Gurley got paid, and that's probably where it starts. And we'll go from there, end quote. And I kind of almost think, because each side is thinking a a little differently. The Cowboys are thinking of it as I just said. They're thinking, okay, we got these three guys, we have to pay, and we've got to get them covered before we will get you covered. Where Zeke is looking at it from a completely different way, a completely different aspect, where he's kind of saying, hey, I want to get my money now because one... With the workload that I'm going under, if I have one injury this year, next year, hell, look at it. A.J. Green, injured in practice. Corey Coleman, tore his ACL in practice. Like, I could come to training camp, I could tear my ACL, and then you don't want to pay me that money because now I'm coming off of an ACL injury, and then I'm going into my contract year with that, and it could ruin everything. So, like... From the Zeke standpoint, I understand. I understand where he's coming from. He wants to get paid. He doesn't want to get hurt. He knows the workload that they put him through. He knows that, I mean, with age and Zeke, it's not really a huge thing because, I mean, even if he played out the next two years of his contract or sat out the next two years of his contract, he's 26 by the time he becomes an unrestricted free agent. So someone's going to give him money at 26 it really comes down to that workload. And it's like, hey, I know what I'm worth. I'm not going to go out there and play for anything less, which comes to the issue of where we're at right now. Zeke holding out. Apparently he's in Cabo um, training while he's holding out from the Cowboys. Other articles have said that there's Jerry Jones running his mouth about, and this is, And this is the part I don't like when it comes to Jerry Jones, obviously. Um, He told CBS 11, the point there there is you don't have to have a rushing champion to win a Super Bowl. But Emmett was the first one to do it because they brought up how this isn't the first time the Cowboys have had to deal with this. Emmett Smith also did the same thing. They lost the first two games. They paid Emmett. They went on to win the Super Bowl. And I get what you're trying to do here, Jerry. Like, I get it. You're trying to say, like, you're trying to say that we don't need Zeke to win the championship, but it's quotes like this that could end up hurting the Cowboys at the end of the day because you don't know how that is going to land. Like, Zeke could see that and go, well, fuck you too. And there you go. You just killed negotiations. Like, that's why I don't like that kind of a statement from Jerry Jones because the goal for the Cowboys is to sign the three guys they need this year or the three young guys this year and then get Zeke next year. The question is, is Zeke going to be okay with that? Because I don't know if Zeke is thinking about this, but it's just something that plopped into my mind of you look at it. Dak gets his money. Braylon Jones gets his money. Then you've got Jalen Smith gets his money. Is there going to be enough money for me to get what I want? Because COO of the Cowboys put it out. It's going to start at that Todd Gurley level. And if you look at running backs, Todd Gurley, his guaranteed amount at signing, $21.9 million of a $57.5 million contract for four years. You look at Le'Veon. Le'Veon sat out a full year. He was $52.5 million over four years. You look at guys like David Johnson, who was the one of the first that we saw. 
39 over 3, but then since then, LaShawn McCoy has cashed in. It went 40. Then you saw um, Devonta Freeman in 2017 got his 41 million over five years from the um, Atlanta Falcons. So when it comes to Zeke and playing, and how long is this holdout going to last? I think that he will not be in training camp. I don't think we see Zeke for a single preseason game. I don't I don't think so. I think that this holdout goes most, if not all, of the offseason. The question for me is, do the Cowboys let it hit the regular season? And I say, do they let it hit the regular season? Because I necessarily don't think think Zeke is going to blink. I don't think this is going to be something where it gets to the season. Zeke goes, well, shit, I got to play. And then they go ahead and like well, he goes ahead, I should say, and plays where I see this kind of playing out. And I'm pulling up the Cowboy schedule right now to get a lay down of it is to me, one of two things is going to happen. The first one, and this is the one that I think I'd say about 75% chance this one happens where he doesn't play the preseason. He's not in training camp, vice versa, not in training camp, not in preseason. And then the regular season gets here and there's no new contract. Jerry Jones is staying strong. He's not going to give. Zeke a contract. So then Zeke comes up and he goes, okay, I'm not playing. And he doesn't play against the Giants. And then he goes, okay, I ain't playing against the Redskins. And he doesn't play against the Redskins. And there's a chance in my mind, I know, that the Giant one is iffy. But let's say two, three games. He misses because realistically how things will play out is the Giants. That one's going to be tough for the Giants to win, even with a zeke Cowboys, because Golden Tate's not going to be playing. Sterling Shepard, we don't know how he's going to come back from the little injury he's had in training camp. Hopefully he's there and fine for week one. And then you got Corey Coleman, torn ACL. Um Cowboys last year without Golden Tate and without um, Corey Coleman split with the Cowboys. So, like, I could see the Giants coming in and getting a win week one, playing the Cowboys tough. Um, But even if they don't do it, if they don't do it, it goes to three weeks. If they do win against the Cowboys, it's two. So if they lose to the Giants, then I could see them going into Washington. And getting beat by Washington. And being 0-2 against the division. Overall. And the same thing happening. That happened with Emmett Smith. Of like, well, you know what? Screw it. Here's your money. We'll pay you. Can you get back out on the field, please? We need you to win some games. And then everything chugs along as usual. Or the slight variation. That's option A. Option B to this is that if they win against New York and then lose against Washington, lose against Miami, then before New Orleans, Green Bay, New York, Philly, I could then also see Jerry Jones going, okay, one and three, here's your money. Go ahead. We need you. We can't beat the Saints. Or if they even, the stupidest thing, like, if, like, I'm glad I'm not in the Cowboys' shoes because I don't know what I would do. Because if you lock down Zeke now, that kind of cripples you when it comes into this free agency. Um, I know they drafted guys in the draft to come in, but none of them to me are anything that's going to be as special as Zeke. Dak Prescott, they got, I'm going to say, got lucky with. I know in the Draft videos, I said he'd be a good fit with the Cowboys. No one expected Dak coming out of college to be what he is right now. So, like, for me, 
I look at that and go, do you put your chips on Zeke? Sign Zeke. Sign Dak and then possibly lose out on Braylon Jones and Jalen Smith. Or do you say we're going to ride or die with Zeke? We'll get Jones. We'll get Smith. If we don't get Prescott, then we're off. And I know Cowboy fans are like, Ricky, you're stupid. Um, there's no way we're not re-signing Prescott. And part of me goes, yeah, you're right. Um, that's why I kind of like, I, be- I want to believe that Zeke will play this year. That's why I said 75-25. But I wouldn't be surprised if he goes ahead and he sits out this whole season. Because I think, here's what's running through my head. If anyone is going to blink in this situation, it's going to be the Cowboys. Because Zeke knows his value. He knows what he's worth. He knows that this team is a worse off team without him than they are with him. So in my view of this, Zeke has all the power. Because the way Zeke sees it is, hey, I'll sit out, we'll miss the playoffs, and then you'll come running. You'll come backing up that Brinks truck to give me money. And if I'm the Cowboys, it's kind of which pill do you want to swallow? Do you want to swallow the let's get Zeke locked down now? And then worry about the other three or have him hold out an entire year. Cause I don't, I think that if he does not get an extension, we will not see Zeke this entire year. Then at that point, that makes negotiations very interesting heading into next year because you got an off season of the three guys you got to get locked down. The young guys, you got to get locked down. And then you got Zeke, who's still probably unhappy at that point because he's probably not, in his mind, he's not seen as a priority by you. So that might tender the relationship a bit. But to finally put a kibosh on this kind of me getting my thoughts and just kind of throwing my thoughts out and kind of talking through everything... If I had to definitively answer the question, is this the last, will we ever see Zeke play another game for the Cowboys or has Zeke played his last game for the Cowboys? I'm going to say no. He will be suiting up for the Cowboys again because I think that the Cowboys start either 0-2 or 1-3 or God forbid they let it go four and they go one and four in their first four or one and three in their first four games. There's going to be a point. Oh, and two, one and three, one and four that Jerry Jones says, screw it. Winning is more important. We got to get this done. And they give Zeke their money. That is what I think will happen. He will sit out into the regular season, miss about maybe a quarter at most, the first four games at most, probably two games, and then get that contract extension. But then there's that little 25% of me that says, I don't know if he is not a cowboy ever again. But there's a part of me that's like, I could see him sitting out the whole year. I could see both sides not wanting to blink. But that's what I think. I'm going to put my chips on. He holds out into the regular season, misses two, maybe three, maybe four games, and then gets a contract from Jerry Jones and the Cowboys front office. I want to hear from you guys, though. Let us know what you guys think down below. What do you think of the whole Zeke situation? Do you do you side with Zeke? Do you side with the Cowboys? If you were the Cowboys office, how would you manage it? And Cowboy fans, what are you thinking? Does Zeke play this year? Does he hold out a couple of games? Is he starting week one? Is he gone the whole year? Let us know what you guys think down below.